It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what would happen if you aim the Hubble Space Telescope at Earth? Well, it's never good to aim anything in the opposite direction. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I'm claiming to everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. This is a question from Kyle, who asks, if the Hubble telescope were aimed at the Earth, how detailed would the images be? Oh, it's in their little logo. Interesting. This is a common question. The Hubble operators get it a lot, and their frequently asked questions page answers it. The problem isn't, as some people say, that the Earth is too bright. As Phil Plate of Bad Astronomy pointed out, Hubble points at the Earth pretty regularly to calibrate one of its instruments. The fundamental problem is that Hubble is too slow. Let me explain. Let yeah, you'd get a bunch of motion blur, because Hubble's moving, what, 27,000 kilometers per hour relative to Earth. So good luck trying to get a bead on any specific location down there. I mean, that's not a big deal for what it's supposed to be doing, which is going the opposite direction, looking at distant stars and galaxies, which might as well be stationary relative to Earth, considering the far distances. Let's imagine we want to take a photo of this normal desk. Photons from the desk have to pass through all of the Earth's atmosphere, which can cause problems for ground-based telescopes. True. But for space-based telescopes, it actually isn't much of a problem. The reason is geometric. If the distortion happens closer to the source, it can't mess up the image as much. The first small problem we'll run into is resolution. Hubble is the best visible light telescope. I mean, the atmospheric distortion would cause light scattering, but I like the point about him mentioning that it's pretty far away. It's kind of like in nuclear reactors. Hubble operates above the scattering medium, if you will, that being the Earth's atmosphere. Just like reactors have moderators to slow down neutrons and control their behavior. What we have, but its resolving power does have limits. Pluto out in the Kuiper Belt lies right at those limits. Until the New Horizons flyby of Pluto, the best pictures we had of Pluto were from Hubble, and they mm. were pretty bad. To Hubble, the X planet is little more than a mysterious blur. With Hubble's resolution and distance from the desk, the desk would look like this. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming the desk is beneath a skylight or outside. But the big problem. I always love XKCD sound effects. And after all, I mean, since it's light, Hubble Telescope is a space radiation detector because electromagnetic radiation is just light. Is motion. Hubble is moving across Earth's surface at over seven kilometers per second, yeah. which means that from Hubble's perspective, the desk is speeding by at seven kilometers per second. Any reasonable length exposure, even with perfect resolution, would be completely blurred in the direction of motion. It's the same problem as driving along a highway and trying to take a picture of the ground passing beneath your car. Yep, just like what I mentioned earlier. The relative speed is a problem. Combining the two effects of resolution and motion gives us an end result that looks like this. That's no good. Could we rotate Hubble to track the surface and eliminate uh... the blur? Well, Hubble routinely swivels to follow targets as it orbits. Usually the targets are astronomical objects yeah. that are super far away. The automatic onboard tracking algorithms can at best handle targets as close as about 10 times the distance to the moon. I was going to say, it'd be swinging around really, really fast to try to keep up with something on the surface of the Earth. That is not practical at all. <laughs> Some radiation detectors are designed this way that you have a minimum range, which is why in things like a nuclear power plant, multiple types of radiation detectors are used because some of them are better at certain power levels and certain ranges, depending on what you're doing. One of which is overexposure, kind of like they were talking earlier with the brightness. I know they sort of dismissed that aspect, and they're right that it's just one part of the problem, but it's still a problem. You're going to risk overloading its sensors. It's like pointing a highly, finely tuned laser sensor directly at the sun. Just no. We're using a highly sensitive radiation detector, such as a scintillation detector, or even a Geiger counter. You put it into something that's too high a voltage, you enter what is known as the continuous discharge region. And that means the radiation's not causing ionization, just you're having a high enough voltage in the tube that that by itself is causing ionizations, rendering your detector useless. When astronomers want to use Hubble to take pictures of the moon itself, they have to send it manual commands to rotate and then turn on the camera mid-maneuver. It doesn't work very well. The resulting photos are better than what you can see with the naked eye, but sure. they're not very good by Hubble standards. Here's our desk with the image degraded by a similar amount. Yeah, the moon's not that far away and what Hubble's designed to look at. Unfortunately, relative to its size, our desk is moving across the telescope's field of view much, much faster than the moon. Yeah, you're going to need to 
have that thing turn on a dime like the way anti-aircraft turrets on vehicles are supposed to track fighter jets or something crazy like that, except this thing's going way, way faster than that. Another reason why radiation detectors have a minimum range and are offset is because of dead time, which is a period after each detection event when the detector is in a position where it can't record another event. After all, instruments can only count so fast. And you could even have a pileup event, which is, say, a really, really hot radiation source that a detector only records as one count, even though it got a hundred counts, they were just a lot and very fast. It's another limitation of something like Geiger counters, but Anyway, those, that is what this crazy Hubble scheme makes me think of. The point is, you're using a detector for something that it's not supposed to do, and you get really weird readings. And in this case, you might even break the telescope's instrumentation. The strange thing is, the disk still really isn't moving all that fast. Uh -huh. At least the angle to the disk isn't. <laughs> to track the surface of the Earth, Hubble would need to rotate at less than one degree per second, or around a tenth of an RPM. But Hubble is simply too slow. Yeah. It wasn't built for surface tracking. The telescope's top rotational speed is only a few degrees per minute, about the speed of the minute hand on a clock. I mean, there probably are some satellites. I mean, there are satellites that are designed to do this. Hubble just isn't it. Just like there are radiation detectors that are designed to capture the full spectrum of something, such as a high purity germanium detector, but Geiger counters can't. They're cheaper, but they can't do that. And even those speeds are fast enough that its gyroscopes cause vibrations which destroy the image quality. Ooh, Clearly, we need our own targeting that. control system. Hubble's rotational moment of inertia is- Put a dinosaur on it like you did in the logo. Similar to that of a small carousel, which isn't that big in an absolute sense. With our custom system in place, Hubble could be made to track the surface and get photos pretty close to its optimal quality. I like the idea of having a guy on a little bicycle. Which means that while Hubble couldn't read over your shoulder, it could watch you roll around on your desk chair. But this isn't just a hypothetical sure. situation. Much of the technology in military spy satellites is believed to be similar to that of Hubble. So, in a sense, coining a Hubble-type telescope at the Earth's surface is not only possible, it's what the US government actually does. Hmm, they just use different sort of, just different sort of tracking and focus, I presume. Interesting. I don't know, though. The very idea of doing something like this is a form of overkill and just poor optimization. Basically using a nuclear power plant to manufacture radioisotopes to use in medical imaging or something like that. You could do it. It's just going to give you a bunch of unnecessary crap that you don't want as well. So not optimal, but I guess you could technically do it and hopefully it doesn't break. What a silly and fascinating idea. Thanks again for the recommendation and thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.